the title for today's message dealing with doubts amen dealing with doubts when the bible talks about doubt that means people are suffering with the problem of doubt what is doubt doubt is worrying doubt is thinking negative doubt is dwelling on the past failures doubt is considering every negative thing from the devil taking the lie of the devil listening to the lie of the devil obeying his words his thoughts all these are called doubts so the bible talks about doubt very specifically clearly i want you to go with me to the book of james 16 but let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind the bible says when we pray when we ask we must ask in faith and not doubting what does this verse uh, mean what is the meaning behind this verse it means we can ask in doubt you can pray in doubt you can fast in doubt you can worship in doubt that's what this verse is saying sometimes we may satisfy our ego satisfy our conscience thinking i am praying today i prayed for long hours today i fasted today i did some evangelism so you are satisfying your ego your conscience but then it may not be a result of faith because the bible talks about it you may ask in doubt you may pray in doubt you may praise in doubt you're praising that means your words are praising but your mind is thinking doubt your mind is thinking fear you're praying because you're afraid you're afraid of negativity you're afraid of death you're afraid of negative outcome i have been there i have done that i have woke up in the middle of the night thinking i am praying but it was the result of my fear i am fearing i am dreading so i am crying and i am going and praying but it is not faith we can pray in doubt this message has set me free this revelation of faith and doubt this revelation of god's word has transformed my life i want you to get this doubt is the biggest thief of your blessing why i say thief of your blessing because god has already blessed you god has already given you now it is yours the blessings are yours healing is yours prosperity is yours but doubt can come and steal what is yours it is yours you have it in you but doubt can steal from you so we have to cast him out shut him out of the door we should not doubt let's study on this let's go to the next verse of james chapter 1 verse 7 and 8 very clearly it says for he, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the lord a double minded man is unstable in all his ways the bible says the one who doubts and prays the one who doubts and asks he shall not receive anything he shall not receive anything from the lord because a double minded man is unstable what is this word specifying double minded that means you have two minds one is the mind of christ the other one is your unrenewed mind mind of christ knows all things mind of christ has the wisdom of god mind of christ is full of faith but unrenewed mind knows only old things unrenewed mind relies on past experiences so you as an individual now after you've been born again you have two mind the mind of christ and your mind carnal mind unrenewed mind that's why the bible always says romans chapter 12 renew your mind transform yourself by renewing your mind so you have to renew your mind so when you renew your mind your mind becomes one with the mind of christ it becomes one and then you are no more double minded you are single minded when bible says if you are double minded you won't receive anything from the lord that means even opposite is true if you are single minded you receive everything from the lord amen you receive everything god has already given now it is our part to 
receive we have to receive by single mindedness so it's very important to cast out this doubt cast out this evil thing uh, worry cast out this unbelief because bible says romans chapter 14 verse 23 but he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith for whatever is not from faith is sin whatever is not from faith that means unbelief is sin doubt is sin whatever is not of faith is sin that means doubting is also one of the sin now how do we deal with this sin now first let us understand how sin works let us understand how sin is birthed in heart and how sin leads to death and destruction so you will understand all other sins you will also understand doubt which is also one of the sin how sin works the bible says before a person commits sin he should be tempted to sin before a person has to commit anything lying adultery idolatry drunkenness fornication debauchery any kind of sin that you can name before a person can commit the sin he has to be tempted to do sin right you have to be tempted because the temptation begins in your mind and then it's conceived in your heart it's birth and it is fully grown becomes a habit becomes a lifestyle leads to death and destruction that's what it says in the book of james chapter 1 verse 13 to 15 let no one say when he is tempted i am tempted by god for god cannot be tempted by evil nor does he himself tempt any one but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed then when desire has conceived it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown brings forth death this is the process of sin this is how any sin works first it begins with a thought how the thought comes how the tempter comes and tempts you with that thought and bible very clearly says let no man say god tempts it is not god who tempts it is satan the tempter the devil the evil one tempts the individual and how he tempts specifically what is your weakness for everybody it is not the same temptation for some it is drink drunkenness for some it is smoking for some it is women for some it is uh, pride for some it is ego for some it is short temperedness for some it is loose talking it varies for some it is money it varies from person to person how how they will tempt you according to what is your weakness the bible is very clear it says but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed he is tempted by his own desires he is tempted by his own choice desire is a choice because it's a thought in your mind it becomes a deep desire and then you make a choice you make a choice to follow or not to follow so the bible says based on your desires based on your choice the tempter knows and he comes and tempts and when you shun him when he knows that you are strong in that he will not tempt you in that area today we are going to study on dealing with doubts so this is how any sin works this is how tempter tempts to sin so in, b- before this we learned unbelief is sin so that means even unbelief has to have the same process before you could have unbelief before you could doubt you are tempted to doubt you are tempted to have unbelief you are tempted to doubt when you believe i am healed i am 
uh, having great back, great legs, great uh, uh, body. I don't have sickness. My organs are good. When you believe that you're perfectly fine, the tempter comes and says, look, there is shooting pain in your knee. Look, there is shooting pain in your back. Look, there is problem in your heart. He tempts you with a thought. When he tempts you with the thought, don't think, now I am doubting. Now, because I am doubting, I am not going to receive anything from God. Because in James chapter 1, in the first verse which I showed you, James chapter 1 verse 6, I told you a person who is asking in doubt shall not receive. But you are not yet doubting. I want you to get this, get the clarity. You are tempted to doubt, but you have not yet doubted. You are tempted to doubt because even doubting is a sin. Unbelief is a sin. Now you are tempted to doubt. Now if you take that thought and you apply corresponding action, then you have taken that doubt and converted into an action and made it into an unbelief, made it into a fear. So you shall reject that temptation. Because devil will use this strategy. Saying that you are in doubt. You are in unbelief. You are not going to receive anything from God. You must say no. I am not in doubt. It is a temptation and I nullify that temptation. I nullify that thought. Because Jesus made it very clear. In the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse number 31. Take ye no thought saying. What is the whole context of this verse? It says do not worry by saying. Do not take any thought of negativity, thought of lying, thought of unbelief, thought of doubt and say it. If you are, if, if you, when you get a thought and when you say, you are taking that thought. Jesus said don't take that thought. Don't take that thought. See birds can fly above your head. But do not allow the birds to make nest on your head. Right? Don't allow it to make a nest. So birds can fly. Thoughts of negativity can come. But don't continue to dwell on that thought. Don't continue to dwell in unbelief. You shun that. You rebuke that. Don't take that thought. Jesus said, take ye no thought saying. I am not going to take that thought. I am not going to say that thought. Very important. I am not going to take that thought. And I am not going to say that thought thought you are not taking so when you're not taking you are shunning the temptation when temptation of any sin comes you take no thought and when temptation comes you say no i'm not doing that no i'm not seeing that no i'm not going to act in anger in pride you are you are not allowing that thought to dominate you in the same way you have to control and ensure that your doubt is not dominating you. When the thought comes, devil will say, okay, now you have doubted, so you are not going to receive. You must say, no, what is doubt? What is doubt in the context of Bible? The definition of doubt is when you withdraw back, when you stop believing in something, st see, st stopping from ceasing to continue to do. Like in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 39 it says, We are not of those who shall withdraw back. We don't withdraw back. When you believe that you are healed, continue to move on that you are healed. When you believe that you are prosperous, continue to move on that you are prosperous. Don't withdraw back and say, I have doubted. I am not going to be healed. I think it's not going to work. I am already having these thoughts. You must say, no, this is a temptation. I rebuke this temptation. I am not considering this thought. And don't say that thought. And continue to stand. Don't withdraw back from your belief. Don't withdraw back. That's what Jesus said in Mark chapter 11 verse 23 and 24. When you look at the mountain and does not doubt in your heart and say, and say, be removed, be cast out, it shall obey you. You shall not doubt in your heart and you shall say. It's very important that you shall say. So when you say, what you are, even though you are thinking, negative thoughts are coming, you are fighting that negative thoughts with words. You cannot fight thoughts with thoughts. We fight thoughts with words. You, they, when negative thought comes, you say, no, I am not considering this thought. I am not withdrawing back. I am not seizing from this. I am moving forward and I am continuing to take my ground, having done all. Stand. Amen. So we stand. We stand on the 
word of God. We are not giving up. We are not falling down in the ring. The one who stands till the last wins in the boxing ring. Amen. And we are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from victory. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are not withdrawing back. So don't take that thought. Don't take that temptation. It's very, very powerful. You, you, you can take it or not take it. Depends on what you say. God gave me this beautiful uh, revelation from the book of Genesis in the story of Abraham and Sarah. I want you all to go and read that uh, Genesis. Now let's read Genesis chapter 18, the story of Abraham and Sarah. You remember three angels came and visited Abraham and they told Abraham, your wife next year, she will bear a son at, the, at this appointed time. Sarah, who was listening from behind, she laughed to herself and she said, can this happen? Is this possible? I am old. Because Abraham and Sarah had crossed childbearing age, so she laughed to herself and she said, I want you to read that portion, so powerful. I will certainly return to you according to the time of life and behold, Sarah, your wife shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself saying, after I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, why, uh, why did Sarah laugh? saying, shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Amen. In this so beautifully, the scripture says, Sarah laughed and said. She laughed and said. She took the thought of unbelief, thought of fear, thought of negativity. And she said, Will I have this pleasure? Will this happen? Will I have this child? She said, she spoke unbelief. And look at the response of God. How beautifully God is responding. God is uh, asking to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Saying. God made it very clear. God didn't say, why did Sarah laugh? God said, why did Sarah laugh? saying because she took the doubt she took that unbelief she not only laughed she said is it possible will this happen no wonder numbers 14 28 says i will do the very thing that you say so god told sarah how can you laugh god is asking abraham why did sarah laugh saying. So it's so important when you have unbelief, when you have thoughts of negativity, you don't say, you don't utter them. Here, emphasis is given on both words. Holy Spirit very clearly explained this to me. Emphasis is given on both things. One is the action, the other one is words. Sometimes we may say all the words and still not believe. We may do long prayers, but still not believe. We may confess all the scriptures, but still not believe. It's not how much you say. It's also how you say. Do you believe what you say? So here, she laughed. The corresponding action. The action was contrary to what God said. Her action was action of unbelief. And her words were words of unbelief. So it's very important when you have doubt, you don't do these two things. You cannot have words of unbelief and you cannot have action of unbelief. I repeat, when you have thoughts of doubt, you cannot do these two things. You cannot have words of unbelief and you cannot have action of unbelief. Both you have to nullify. That is how you deal with doubt. You don't take that doubt. Doubt comes from Satan. Temptation based on past experience, based on past uh, failures, based on what's happening around you, based on how the whole world, the system works. But then you go by the word. You don't take that thought. That's how you deal with doubt. 
this is exactly what happened throughout the bible even in the story of uh, um, disciples when uh, john 20 25 very clearly says when disciples ran and came and told thomas thomas jesus is risen from dead you know what thomas said he said the bible says so he said i want you to see that john 20 25 so he said to them unless i see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side i will not believe he said he declared i will not believe unless i see unless i touch he said he said that when he got the thought of unbelief if he would have not said that means he has not taken temptation because either you take temptation or you reject temptation like how jesus rejected temptation and the bible says satan left jesus for a while so when temptation comes to you you reject that temptation when you reject that temptation you are not taking that thought amen so if you remember in the story of uh, mary when angel gabriel comes to mary and says you are going to bear a son and you shall call him savior of the world jesus she's puzzled she has no clue she says how can this be i don't know any man she doesn't know how this works she's so innocent she's not clear she doesn't know the word she doesn't know what isaiah has prophesied so she asks that question angel gabriel explained to her explained saying the power of most high will overshadow you when angel gabriel gave her the explanation when she got the word what she said be it unto me according to thy word she uttered those words she took that thought she took that word and she uttered those words be it unto me so when she uttered those words it's done amen she received it she she did the corresponding action whatever corresponding action related to your uh, faith you can do it so when she said that immediately the miracle began to birth in her amen praise the lord so it's so important when tempter comes and tempts you you don't say anything contrary to god's word you don't say anything what you are thinking and you are not going into discouragement that you are doubting you must know that it's a temptation and i don't take this temptation and god is not going to punish you blame you question you because you got this thought because he has already given you this scripture second corinthians chapter 10 verse number 5 god has given you this scripture casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts against the knowledge of god bring it down into captivity into the obedience of christ when god has told this bring it to captivity every thought that means you can bring it to captivity when god has given you this command he has done a covenant with you christ is in you with the power of holy spirit you can bring every thought into captivity so it says bring every thought into captivity thought of unbelief thought of fear bring down every imagination every negativity every fear bring it to captivity into the obedience that means what every thought can be brought into captivity and god is aware that you you will have lot of negative thoughts what thought will you bring into captivity if it is not the thought of doubt not the thought of worry not the thought of temptation not the thoughts of sin then what thoughts are you bringing into captivity if the thoughts of holy thoughts of uh, perfection thoughts of the bible then why should you bring it to captivity are you getting what i'm saying when you have thoughts of the bible why should you bring that thought into captivity so god is aware of your thoughts so god is not going to hold you responsible for your temptation he is not going to question you oh you got this uh, thought you got this temptation god will see are you dwelling on that thought when you get a thought is not the problem are you dwelling on that thought are you continuing in that thought are you meditating in that thought are you doing the actions of that thought are you speaking the words of that thought that is what it is 
so when you because god knows that so he said bring every thought into captivity that means the thoughts of unbelief thoughts of fear thoughts of negativity thoughts contrary to god's word will come to you the tempter will come to you he did not leave jesus so he is not leaving anybody so he comes to you but like jesus same jesus is in us we cast him out we cast him away we resist him by speaking the words of faith speaking words filled with the word of god casting down every imagination now when devil comes and says you cannot do it you don't have that what takes in you you are sick you're going to die with this sickness your body is not going to be healed you're not going to be prosperous you're not going to be married thoughts of fear thoughts of negativity thoughts of doubt thoughts of all kinds of things which is not in line to god's word when you get that thought you have to resist that thought bring that thought into captivity resist that thought and say no i don't take that thought by saying i say i am healed i am blessed i am prosperous i am rich i am perfect because i was already blessed i was already healed i was already restored i confess that i speak that word i fight that thought not saying negative things but saying the word of god when you say the word of god they will knows that he cannot stand against you now and he leaves you for a while so speak the word fight him against the two edged sword take the two edged sword and say that i know what bible says i believe this word i am already restored i am already healed i am already strong i am already rich i am already prosperous i am already blessed i am already blessed i have already got it because he has given everything pertaining to life and godliness he has given it i believe it you say that when you say that you are not taking that thought that's how you deal with doubts continue to say continue to say continue to say and very importantly believe and say it can be that you are saying and still not believing believe and say so it's very important what you believe and what you say and we believe what the bible tells about you and we believe what bible calls you amen dealing with doubts when you deal with these doubts they will cannot tempt you of your capability your ability your future your family your children your ministry your finances and your healing he cannot tempt you because for every problem for every confusion you have a scripture you have a solution you take that word you take that sword and deal with your doubts so when the doubt comes no for sure doubt is a sin unbelief is a sin so the tempter is coming to tempt me for me to sin but i don't take this temptation i don't take this temptation by saying i say the word of god i deal with my doubt with the word of god and this word shall not return back void it shall not return back void it shall accomplish for what it was sent amen church are you ready to deal with your doubts are you ready to conquer all your doubts when you have doubts when you have fear what you do you raise a hallelujah amen you raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief raise a hallelujah louder than every fear praise god because he has already blessed you healed you he has already given all things to you shall